Last week, we didn't quite get as far as we wanted to. And, you know, that happens, I guess we'll say. But this week, we're going to play Does It Start and Run? Pretty sure you know the answer to this. Roll the intro. Thanks for tuning in again this week, guys. I am Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News, and we're gonna get her fired this week for you. Now, we still have a lot yet to go before we can go ahead and kick this thing over. As you can see, we've obviously gotta put the clutch and belt assembly back together. We've gotta to put the whole air intake on. We've gotta put the exhaust assembly on. We've even gotta put some of the frame back together. Not to mention, we've gotta add coolant in those items. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. We're gonna go through some tips and tricks as we go through it. Stay tuned. Next up, we are gonna put the clutch assembly together. Now in this, you wanna make sure that you've got this clean, same thing with the motor surface, because what you're looking for is a good mating surface here. Belts are a great drive system until they get wet, so making sure that we can keep water out of there is obviously priority number one. Next up are gonna be the clutch and pulley assemblies. Now to make sure we got it all sealed back up, make sure this area is clean here too. Same thing with that gasket that sits in here. We wanna make sure that's clean. We wanna make sure that this is watertight so that way we don't end up with any issues. With a brand new top end in this engine, the last thing that I wanna do is start it with a crummy old air filter in it. Bronco was kind enough to send us a new one for that, so we're gonna swap that out before we even stick the airbox assembly back in the chassis. One thing that you're always gonna to wanna to double check is make sure that you've got all the sensors plugged in because when you start it, you really wanna start it and you wanna start riding it fairly shortly after that. We wanna go through an entire heat cycle and we'll go over the break-in procedures here in a little bit. But really, make sure that you've got everything plugged in and you wanna make sure that it's snapped together so that way you've got a good connection because nothing is worse than having to go back and chase issues like that right after a fresh rebuild. Something that's often overlooked. We're redoing the top end. I've checked the hoses. They all appear to be in good shape. There's no real cracking or anything like that. I always tell people, replace these worm gear clamps. They're very inexpensive, but when you do, make sure you put it on in a way that is easy for you to access in case you ever have to take it apart again. And also make sure that you put it on in a way that it's not going to run into something else. Double check it ahead of time. It'll save you a ton of time on the backside of things. As we put this frame piece in, something that I always like to do that helps save a ton of headaches down the road is I usually put one bolt in each piece and I put it all together very loose 
Once I get all the bolts in, then I'll go back and tighten it down. In a lot of cases, you're gonna find that you're gonna need to move this to get everything to line up before you put it together. Now that we've got all the coolant hoses hooked up, I want to make sure that I put coolant in the system, kind of to make sure that we take care of systems in an orderly fashion. It's going to be a little bit before we go to start it, but I want to make sure that I know that I've got coolant in there. Now as you see, the first thing that I always do is make sure that we've got coolant in the overflow tank. That is the one thing that you don't want to forget about. Once we've got that full and ready to go, then it's time to start working on the rest of the system. We're close. One of the things, this being a garage studio, that everyone in the building around me is going to appreciate is me putting the exhaust back on before we go ahead and start it up. Now, I know you guys remember, we talked about how that exhaust manifold was cracked. We replaced that, we put a new gasket on that. Same thing, the other gasket was worn out. This actually has two small dimples in it, so that way it is clocked in there so it doesn't rotate, but this, when it goes in here is actually meant so the exhaust has a little bit of movement. That way it can move around and still maintain a nice tight seal and stay nice and quiet. That way you can sneak up on anything that you want to when you're out in the woods. So we're gonna put the gasket on, we're gonna put the exhaust there, then we're gonna put the springs on. Before we put all this back together, we wanna to make sure that we at least get this vent hose in because we're gonna put the fuel tank on even if just temporarily here. That being said, this goes to a plastic fitting on the top of the rocker arm cover. That's a pretty fragile piece that has a tendency to break sometimes. So make sure that you're pretty careful when you go ahead and put this on. Fuel tank time. The big thing when putting in the fuel tank is go slow. This end goes in first and make sure that you hold the fuel line up and out of the way so you don't get that stuck in or behind the tank. Same thing, there's a vent line that I've wrapped around up around the key up here so that way you don't have any issues there. And then the plug for the fuel pump and sending unit is up top there too. Just make sure that those stay up and out of the way so you've got access as you put the fuel tank in. So we're really close, but not quite there yet. That being said, fuel tank's on, everything's hooked up. Really important is to make sure that we've A, got fuel pressure, and B, we don't have any fuel leaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cycle the key on for a second. I heard the fuel pump kick on there. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the key off, and we're gonna see, did we get, we got some fuel all over the place. So knowing that I've got fuel pressure there, now I feel a little bit better about starting it and knowing what may be a problem if it doesn't happen to start. In this, another part about this is 
recheck to make sure that you've got all your fluids topped off. I've just double checked the oil, I know we've got fuel, and we've just topped off the coolant. Those are the major keys in making sure that we're going to have a successful engine startup. So now is the moment that we've all been waiting for. There's a few things to make sure on before this. Obviously I want to make sure that I've got a clear work area, it's in park. I don't have the fenders and everything put back on. We're going to put those on after we've got everything going for sure and sounding good. In this, Polaris's break-in recommendations are the first 20 hours to essentially take it easy with it. The other big part of it is, is you don't want to let it sit and idle for an extended period of time. So we're going to start this up. We're going to let it sit for a few minutes. We're going to check for any oil leaks. We're going to make sure what the oil looks like. We're going to make sure that there's no coolant problems, no fuel problems, anything like that. We're going to make sure that it sounds good. After we're done with that, we feel good about it. That's when time to take it out and break it in. Sounded pretty good to me. So, we're gonna make sure that we've got everything else back together. We're gonna go for a spin. We're probably gonna catch up with that next week though. So, make sure you stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow us. We'll talk to you soon.